Hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Nadir. Nadir? I, you know, I'm not actually sure how to pronounce that word, but it is a striking deck builder roguelike with uh, some seriously, uh, gosh, how do you even describe these visuals? I, as a person that deals heavily in line and illustration, uh, this is incredible to look at. It might be a little hard to look at for some people, but like, holy shit, I would love to learn from some of this. Okay, so what do we have? Oh, these are interesting. Gene, there's no time to explain. You need to fight this demon. See these cards? You're going to use them to attack and defend yourself. See how they're divided into two parts, blue and red? Remember that. It's going to be important. Here on top of the screen are the demon's cards. They're double-sided. One side is blue, the other side is red. Click on one of your cards. Oh, I see. So they're going to do... Uh, they're going to do a red action, and then a blue action, and then a blue action. So... If I leave with, lead with parry, nope. Okay, I led with parry. Okay, your cards have two abilities. Blue activated when you played on blue. Uh, on the blue enemy card, and red that activates when played on a red enemy card. To play the ability of your card that you need in the moment, match it with the color of the enemy card. It's simple, just try it. Okay, so. I, do I still have parry? I have no idea. What's armor do? Increase armor. Deal three damage a couple of times. It looks like both happened. No, it looks like it gained armor anyway. So I'm just going to keep armoring up. Okay. You felt that slap from the enemy, right? That was the enemy's reaction. Keep in mind that after the enemy reacts, the enemy card will turn over. Use what you've learned so far to defeat this demon on your own. Okay. So I've got 18 armor, it does not seem to be going away. This is interesting and I dig it. So I want to keep at least one parry of each type around. So in that case, we'll just hit it a little bit. And... I've still got plenty. I've got a lot. Oh, but I can't do that. We could do a double slash. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of keep hitting it. I'll get used to this system. I like it. I like the dual card system. That's a really interesting choice. Hopefully we get more interesting cards in these. Hey, I see some rage. Now we'll complicate things a little. See those circle slots on enemy cards? They're called charges. Until all the charges are filled up, the card will not activate its reaction. Oh, will not activate its reaction, will not turn over. How are charges filled? Your cards have enemy icons on them. They indicate how many enemy cards will fill up charges. Play a card, see for yourself. Click on one of my cards. Okay, so if I start with... I do have 10 block. So, I don't necessarily need to block, but I'm going to block anyway. And it looks like it only filled up that one. Your cards with the cost of 2 or 3 are a bit harder. To activate them, you need as many enemy cards of the color visible as the cost on your card. To play a 2 cost blue ability, you need 2 blue enemy cards visible. Abilities that cannot be played are grayed out. Wait, really? Why not? I should have... Oh, I see. It requires three. So if I want to play this one, it'll... Let's see. It triggers. I got it. That makes sense. Important thing. Two cost abilities will fill one charge on two enemy cards of the matching color. Cost three will fill one charge on all three enemy cards. Keep that in mind when you play cards, as the enemy can activate more than one reaction if more than one enemy card gets charges filled. Okay, we're just gonna shield up a little bit. So I'd like to... oh. He's just going defensive. We do have enough that I can do a Master Slash. Worth it. And we can do a second Master Slash. And kill it beforehand. Sick. I wanted to see what Rage would do, but this is fine. I'm getting this. This is actually a really interesting system. It very much follows a lot of similar design conventions for deck builder roguelikes, but it changes a lot in a way that at least makes it interesting to... It makes it interesting in terms of deciding what to do with my cards. Oh, we're talking niche, of course. So, strength can be increased with Rage or decreased with Weaken. 
Now's a great opportunity to play your Valor ability, but hey, it's your game and your choice. I like that for a tutorial. It'll give you Rage, which buffs your stat, or a strength stat. It's important to calculate damage from your cards. Current strength is next to your health bars. Enemy strength works the same, and you can also take a look at it next to his health bar. Uh, so I'm assuming it's that fist. So, yeah. Yeah, so I, I now have a strength of 8. One last thing you need to know. Redraw. If you feel like you're in a pickle and no cards f uh, feel right, you can click on the redraw button. Try it now. Discard your hand, but it gives him protection 1. So it doesn't cause him to do anything, he just has protection. The enemy reacted again. Each opponent you encounter will have a special redraw reaction. You can see what it'll do at the bottom of the screen. On the right are the effects that will be applied to the enemy, and the left are the ones that will affect you. That's all I can teach you. Good luck. Maybe we'll see each other again. Am I supposed to be, like, actually Joan of Arc-ish? Could be. So what is protection? All armor gained by this character with protection status is increased by the status value. I see. So I can't exactly, um... Uh, uh, that's permanent, too. So I, I can't exactly use that too often. But I could use it situationally to, say, interrupt them. So strength determines base damage. Card multiplies strength when calculating it. Multiplies. That's why Master Slash does so much damage. It's actually four times, 400% of eight strength. That's uh real good. And I should be able to kill him before he gets any reactions. I, I really like this. Welcome to the city of Nadir. You're home in the lands of the damned. Well, here you'll be able to construct new buildings for your city to increase your power. To build new structures, you need resources gathered from the remains of your enemies. Use the menu on the left to browse through structures you can build in Nadir. Use the tabs to expand hide structures that cannot be built and ones that are already built. Build an emporium to unlock the card shop. Even in hell, the flow of goods is necessary to keep the system running. It's also a little of a it's also a little known tax haven all under jurisdiction of mammon okay and we can't build anything else uh, let's see doesn't look like I, I can do anything else so looks like we've got gene vlad and herman each with their own sin ever had a bad day think of yep joan of arc so joan not joan well i i don't need french for whom bureaucratic hell became a reality when an error in the afterlife's paperwork sent her down for immediate damnation. She might wear sacred armor and make great sacrifices to achieve the greater good, but in hell, all appeal requests are considered within a millennia or so, meaning that Joan is stuck, for better or worse. Nice. Choose your adversary. Uh, Belze uh, Beelzebub? So, this sin will be dominant and the final enemy will have a strong connection to it. Interesting! I like it! Your journey begins. Now your journey through hell starts. Each fight demons to gain resources needed to upgrade the city of Nadir. The first node on each circle has, has to be a battle, but afterwards you can choose any of the available events in the circle, or you can go deeper. Remember, you can't go back to a higher circle. The very bottom of the map awaits the greater demon of the sin of gluttony, Beelzebub. He's a tough enemy, so make sure you're ready. If you think you're not ready yet, you can use the Return to Nadir button to go back to base with your currently gathered resources. If you die along the way, you'll only bring back half of what you've gathered so far. Interesting. Okay, so I have to fight one of these two before I can go here. Um, I think? It's a little murky. Okay, wait. Abilities? I'm... Oh, is this my deck? Manage my deck. Oh, I see. So this one, then... Edit your cards. Okay, so I gotta complete this combat node first to get these. All of the uh, locations I'm going to are on the in inner side. These are just manage my ability, manage my deck. So I don't think I can turn anything on or off at the moment. Beggar. Fight starts. Ugh. I do wish that the uh, enemy models were a little bit more illustrated. The Some of the card art and stuff has a little bit more line work. Look, I love line work. 10 damage, 5 armor, 8 armor, ooh. Okay, what does shield did do? Prevents all incoming damage from the next attack except breaking attacks. Shield can stack, but each received attack, successful or not, reduces the damage. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, 
I don't have much here. He's got some armor, which is a little rough. I've damaged three times. I'm going to see what I can do with it. Okay, I can gain more shielded. And can't gain a rage. I do actually have a decent amount of armor at the moment. Oh, and redrawing only gains him some armor, so that's not that big of a deal. So I, w I actually want to leave this for a bit. And instead, focus on one of these two. Three damage two times, three damage two times. Yeah, I can't do too much with it. I think I lose both of my shields, unfortunately. Which could have been better, but I'll go with this. So we'll take 10 damage, but block it immediately. But that extra strength is worth it. Okay. So what do we have? Gain armor on both. Is that worth it? Not really, no. Ooh, wide slash. Is that worth it? Vaguely. Now he is going to hit me a decent amount and we're going to have to worry about shields. We have a lot of blue though, which is nice. Because I have a lot of attacks that can kind of get through. Not easily. But at this point I can just kind of kill him off. Without risk. Perfect. So we get soul shards, filth, and cards. Claim your reward, choose one of the three presented abilities. Select one you'd like to confirm. Okay, so we have no way of avoiding that. Redemption. Three protection. Increases all armor gain. Gain three counter. Counter attacks. Uh, attacks back when hit with an attack card. Damage from counter equals half of incoming damage. Counter can stack, but it goes down. Interesting. So it's just the next three hits. So this one's really solid. Sacrifice rage. Deal damage equal to rage status. Value times ten. Afterwards, reduce rage to zero. or finesse uh gained one counter and then boost so the more i use it the more counter i get let's see so what is repentance suffer six damage ghostly burn i like this one just because redemption is great and i don't mind hate oh 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 i i'm mushing them together I like the idea of being, like, heavy on the counterattack side of things. That always seems kind of fun. In this panel, you'll be able to make changes to your cards. You can edit existing cards, create new cards, dismantle own cards into abilities. Deck must contain at least six cards. Ooh. So, I currently have six, so I don't think I can do much about that. I could create a new card, which wouldn't be the worst, or I could edit one of these, and I'm not sure about that. I'm going to try... I'm going to try editing this one. Okay. Oh, both abilities have to have the same cost. Interesting. Remo remove button near the slots. Okay, so we can't do anything in the moment because we have... Oh. I see. So now we have that. I see. So the cards that we got earlier, or the abilities we got earlier, uh, were just added to this edit pool more than anything else. Okay, and we can we could create a new card, but it would just be another assault card. Okay, this makes way more sense and is actually really cool. Uh, I see. Okay, but. You can only visit nodes on the current circle. This is not the current one. Okay, so I'm going to advance because we have nothing. And I have to hold it down. Or, oh. I must have zoomed in by accident. But I guess it's fine. We didn't really care too much. Okay, so I could edit my deck, but there's no point in it. 
So I guess we just have another fight. Either way, super positive about what I'm looking at so far. The customization and the fact that every single ability has these options is really cool to me. Let's see, so we could do a wide slash for 15 damage, or I could start blocking. What is decay? Damage equal to the value every time it receives damage, and then decay is, re decay is reduced by one. Okay, so this sucker hurts a, a smidge. going to parry. And then I'm going to gain rage. What does breaking damage do? Ignores shielded. I see. Now I'm going to gain three protection. Which should... Yeah, may mean I get in 11 armor from this one. And he burns my shielded status rather than me taking damage from that, which is good. Uh, let's see, what do we have? I could gain shielded, but he's going to give me a decay. You know, it's not the worst. We do have to actually hurt him, though. Okay, and piercing damage. Ignores armor and goes directly to HP. So that's a little bit of a doozy. A shielded... So we don't want to... We don't actually want to get hit by that in the slightest. No. We kind of want to hold on to... Uh, do we want to hold on to parry? I have no idea. Okay. In one counter, boost one. Do I want to go for finesse? In this situation, yes. We are actually going to take some damage here, aren't we? Okay. So that'll... That's piercing, though. We kind of don't want that. Yeah, I don't have much of a choice here. This hurts. This is not a fight that you specifically... Let's see, wait, hold up. What is breaking damage? So it just ignores shielded. But since I have no armor, I can't do anything on that one. Give ourselves shielded. And then hit him once. And then hit him again. Okay. And then I can do some damage multiple times. We can't gain any armor here, and I was kind of hoping to gain Wide Slash. But instead, I'm just going to have to hit him with that. This is going to hurt. This whole thing hurts. Okay, so it'll take a couple of runs before I think I really understand I'm supposed to do this well, but it's fine. Delay? What is delay? Triggered during the redraw phase. Interesting. Because delay three counter and shield it is not the worst. Oh, but it requires three cards. That's tough. Uh, let's see. Time slash. Piercing damage is good. What is flank? Stealth ethereal. So Outflank would give give us a bonus card that's pretty good, actually. I don't know what Ethereal does. 
Because we could do Prepare and Valor for a bunch of Rage and Shielded. Or we could do... So we could do Outflank. Or we could do Iron Fist. I like the idea of Iron Fist just because. Okay, we've already done that. So let's, let's edit another one of these. Remove both. Okay. And then we advance because we have nothing else. I'm not fully confident in my ability to win here, but you never know. Is there a difficulty? Because I see this one's green and this one's yellow. Well, let's take a look at the shop. Not that I have too much. Oh, I have to do a combat node first. All right, let's do this one. If I win, rad. If I lose, oh well. Swarm of flies. So they do have rage. And disease. Okay. So they do piercing damage. They're actually pretty weak, all things considered. But yeah, I'm going to have to be shielded before I get hit by that one. Or let them hit me with that one. Okay, what is rust? Interesting. Slightly problematic. Interesting. Okay. Oh boy, they have so much armor. I'm not... I'm not super confident in my ability to survive this one. We'll see. Okay, because those disease cards are brutal. I haven't even hit them yet. I don't know if I want to do two of those. Okay. Yeah, this is just gonna hurt. Not much I can do about it, though. Let's see. I, I think one of my problems is I have too many two-card abilities, which are not helping me. Let's see, I can probably do Rust again. Okay, so even if I shield it, I don't actually... I don't actually... Oh, I still take the status effect, which is a little rough. Okay. Begin the three protection? Yeah. Oh. No, I think I die here. Yeah, I do die. Shoot. Mistimed that one, but it's fine. I want to see if I can even buy anything? Probably not, but I'm going to go for a cheaper deck next time. I like the idea of going full counterattack, but I'm, I think I'm too weak. Okay. It, is, it seems like it's going to take a couple of uh, trial and error runs before I actually have a, a good shot at winning. I either need to be way more aggressive or, I don't know, a lot of different things really. Okay, but yeah, I cannot discount how useful these are. Uh, let's see, at least this guy doesn't seem particularly aggressive. I'm just going to block it a couple of times. What I want to do is kind of trigger the shielded. I will gain the rage. 
I think that's part of it. Maybe we just needed some more rage generation. I don't know. Okay. And yeah, I can also redraw. If I want to. I know he's got two shields, but that's fine. Because I can just shred that off of him. Okay. Do we just keep hitting him or do we give ourselves some armor? I'm actually going to give myself some armor. That 20, 20 damage hit's uh, a little stinky. If I do parry... I think we only get hit once for five. So that's perfect. Okay. And let's focus on his... his shielded carts. Because it's a good spot for me to get a marginal amounts of damage in. That just... Oh, 50% of eight strength. Oh, that's why. Okay, and then we do a wide slash to finish it off. Oh, I'm a four. I I'm a moron. Oh, what a fool I am. Well, that's okay, because now nah, I just kill him. Perfect. Oh, I shouldn't be that self-deprecating in retrospect. People jump on that shit. Uh, let's see. So we could do master slash and valor. It's an option. Growing power, 12 damage, boost 3, 5 shielded, 2 rage. I like taunt. I like taunt a lot. Taunt and master slash. They're obviously a little risky. But taunt kind of makes up for it. Okay, so do we get rid of any of these? I guess just these two. Unfortunately, I think I will al always have this problem where I go for the more expensive thing. And that's not always the best idea, but you know what, whatever. Oh yeah, we've done everything on this level. The hell is this? Oh, lump of flesh, it looks like an apple. I think that's very intentional. Okay. Let's gain the rage. Oh, he gives himself rust for a lot of damage. Okay, I think I'm going to do a second one of these. Then we're going to want to shield up. Because I kind of want to give him rust. Oh, there's taunt. Which I can't strictly do. And please be another cheap one. No, nope, it's anointment. Anointment. Shoot. Well, I think I can... Uh... I'm not going to be able to tank all the damage here. Or did I? I did. Bizarre and unexpected. Okay, there we go. Uh, we have a shielded, so we can do this. And then I'm... Oh. Yes, he does flip. Okay, then we're gonna taunt. I haven't actually hit him yet, which is a bit of a problem. But whatever. Oof. 32 damage. Actually is fine. Did he reduce my strength, or... He must have, or... Oh, yeah, he hit me with a weaken. He had to have. Okay, there's our shield. Do we parry? Parry. 
kind of a wash. Okay. You do seven to him, bait to 16, yeah. Oh, we apply rage to him. That's why I didn't get the rage. That's what taunt does. That's a little rougher. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see. Gain shielded, but also weak. I hate it. Uh, let's see. Hate sacrifice rage. Or do we do storm of slashes? Three damage seven times. And then valor. I'm just going to snag those two. I'll probably get rid of taunts. It's not as good as I thought it was going to be. I mean, it's still good. It actually prevented me from taking a whole bunch of damage. What? I'm like... I'm gonna get rid of one of these. They're not as good. I think we will do the Taunt and Storm of Slashes. It's a little expensive, but it is kind of worth it, especially if I can get that strength gain. Though who knows. All these creatures just... I had a stomach ache late into the night last night, and uh, all these creatures, man, they are making my stomach do some flops. Whew, that's some damage flying my direction, and this guy is a, a little tough. Okay, here's the question. Because I can't do taunts. I could do Storm of Slashes, but that's not going to do much. Uh, how do we want to do this one? Ironically enough, I think we want to slash first. And then we want to do an anointment. We're going to lose our shields first, and then I'll, all of my armor. But that's fine. Now the question is, do we do a Valor? Or do we do a Taunt? I think I'm going to do Valor. Okay. And I could do a wide slash for a lot of damage. Because I can't do it. Oof. Or we could give him. Let's do that. Oh, that. Oh, wait, no, no, no. That works out. That got him good, in fact. Okay, we have we have a taunt. And like no armor, but that's fine. Him just gaining shielded is like hardly a problem. Yeah, I've got to use that way more tactically. Because like I said, I can use this to tactically prevent them from pulling off any of their big moves. It's just the question of... Oh. I forgot he was like heavily shielded. Uh, 
Okay, we have a Valor, we can't do Master Slash. Or we just cycle it out. Because that should make him wipe his lineup, yeah? Yeah, perfect. Though, oh, it doesn't get rid of the tokens. I think. Okay. S still learning and adjusting. So you can't fully st you can't fully stun them. You can only do it partly. Okay, so we need kind of cheaper stuff. We do have hate, which is hella damage. We have taunt, which is iffy. Redemption is good. I might want to snag... Ooh, the only problem is I don't have a whole lot of armor gain. So I might actually want Iron Fist instead. Okay, because that way we can swap these two. Move in... Or no, move in Iron Fist rather than Block. Because they do largely the same thing, but Iron Fist is a little bit better. Now, do we want to go in here to this one? Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in hate. Because if I can get like six rage, which isn't that outlandish, I can sacrifice that for 60 damage. Which uh should be pretty ridiculous ridiculous. Ah! Swarm of flies. You're not my friend. Okay. Do a parry. Oh, do we gain the rage? I don't have to. I can't redraw here. These guys are a little punchier. The problem is those disease cards are freaking stanky. Okay. So I can do 40 damage to them. I don't think it's enough. And my armor gain ain't great. Let me think. If I do hate, and then a wide slash, we just kill them. Perfect. And that is why hate seems worthwhile. Okay, so we don't really need a second one of those. Growing power is kind of interesting, and actually would be really good on one of the twos. Uh, maybe? Twelve damage twice. Twelve damage boost. Twelve damage pierce. I don't really like most of these. Weak is kind of rough. It's not the worst, but it's kind of rough. Good grab sinner's prayer and growing power. I think. Okay. We don't have a whole lot of cheap anything. Go back to this one. We're going to put in Sinner's Prayer. Uh, yeah. Because this way, if this ends up in our lineup, it's a good emergency card. It's not a good one. It's not one that I particularly care too much for. But it's still there. The question is, do we have a 2Z? Uh, an anointment. Yeah, or... Mm, 12 damage, boost 3. Not, not really. No, I'd rather, I'd rather have the shield. I don't really want to bloat my deck too much. Oh, it looks like armor can carry over between rounds. That's something I did not know. Rotten intestines. Oh, this is game is freaking ghoulish. Uh oh, no, our armor just defaults to twenty every time. So breaking damage erase the highest debuff, erase the highest debuff. Okay, so this guy is a debuff counter. Luckily, I don't debuff here. So we're setting up to do... a rage? I guess so. I'm 
Unfortunately, these enemies hurt. Like, a lot. I think I'm gonna have to do a uh, hate. Much as I hate to do so. And then we're gonna taunt him. Now I could parry or I could rage. Hoping I can swap this one. Yes. Okay, four damage two times. And a master slash. He hits my shields. Ah, shit. Oh, he had a multi-hit in there. Okay. Yeah, I did not gain rage. He did. Hit him with that. The piercing damage will kill me. All of these will. I could do a sinner's prayer to avoid one of these, but I think I'm just going to take that piercing damage that he chucks my direction. Because I can maybe survive this otherwise. I'm not betting on it. Or he hits me anyway? I thought I had a shield. I'm confused. Or, oh no, we burnt it earlier. Oh, well, whatever. Alter the Dark Embrace. Uh, heals your character by 8 HP when going to another circle. Oh, well that changes some things. So what else do we have? Unlocks wrath enemies and a new resource skull, new resource idols, throne of want, exalted crypt. Okay, so uh, character development node on the map. And start expeditions with extra soul shards. Damned reward node on the map. Damned, uh, more damned available in the damned reward, reward node. Uh, more damned available. Anvil of souls node on the map. More card rewards. For Joan, even more for Joan, rare cards for Joan. Joan starts each new expedition with some card halves already equipped. Unlocks more card rewards for Vlad, Vlad, rare cards for Vlad. So, let's see. Unlock Vlad Tepes as a starting character. Gluttony enemies, deck, uh, let's see. Card crafting option. Oh, wait, no, we already have the rest of these. So, yeah, it seems like to some degree you're supposed to have like a little bit of a new player's tax here where you uh, you go through a number of runs until you can actually unlock um, you know just a couple of meta progression things some extra resources some better starting cards uh, and maybe some other characters and then you have more and more of a chance it's interesting and I'm really enjoying what is this construct the church of the, of the dragon to get Vlad and then I think Hernan is just straight up not available at the moment. I love the artistry for this game. It is striking as it is ghoulish. And as far as deck builder roguelikes go, it's a little bit more puzzly. It feels kind of like an interesting midpoint between Slay the Spire and Ring of Pain in a way that I really appreciate. The fact that you really have to balance, you know, are you going to be using the blue side or the red side of each of your cards? And instead of being, you know, energy focused, it's just kind of a tit for tat and really about balancing like okay the enemy is about to hit me with this how do i deal with it and can i subvert that in any way shape or form rather than just being about stacking endless armor now obviously there's a lot of ways that i maybe could have done better i'm not entirely sure but honestly as far as a first taste for a fairly promising and relatively original roguelike deck builder i like it i'll definitely come back to this one more in the future I might kind of play some on my own just to max out some of the meta progression so that I can have more of a chance the next time I play. But for now, at least, I had a lot of fun with this one. Anyway, so Nadir is available on on Steam and Good Old Games now. And uh, specifically, I guess, thank you to Good Old Games for sending me this copy of the game. I believe it's 20 bucks normally down to 18 for launch, but it could be a little off on that one. I don't think I am. Uh, so go check it out if you're looking for 
a roguelike deck builder that is uh is different there aren't enough different roguelike deck builders I'm, I'm gonna keep trying to drive that home and i like to see the ones that like really take a bit of a left turn and i'm also curious to see what like rarer cards and abilities will get you i don't know if there's going to be any kind of like relic rewards or things that really throw out the build like you know just permanently plus one rage every time uh something x or y happens like i live for that kind of upgrade but I'm not actually sure if that's something you can do in this one. I think it is much more directly card based, which also works fine. So with all of that said, if you guys like this video in any way, shape or form, leave me a like helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new indie games every single day, then hit subscribe because I've got tons of them to check out. But with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.